evening, you're watching the main news on HK IBC. I'm Clay Fong. Our top stories tonight. Hong Kong's first typhoon of the year is approaching, and the number three signal may be raised tomorrow morning. Laser marks could be placed on cigarettes as part of Hong Kong's anti-smoking campaign. Hong Kong is bracing for its first typhoon of the year. The number one standby signal has been up for most of the day and may be replaced by the number three early tomorrow. The Hong Kong Observatory issued the standby signal number one early this morning and will consider upgrading the alert to number three at 6 a.m. tomorrow. This comes as tropical storm Talim moves closer to the city. At 7 p.m., it was 550 kilometers southeast of Hong Kong and is moving northwest at 10 kilometers per hour. Under the influence of the approaching storm, the city sweated out in extremely hot conditions. The mercury rose to 35 degrees in urban areas and even higher in the new territories. The wetland park in Ting Shui Wai and Yuan Long sweltered as the temperature hit over 38 degrees. The scorching heat made it harder for outdoor workers. <laughs> This cleaner said he felt like he was working inside a furnace. <laughs> While this horticulturist showcased his special homemade heat relief water, citing he needs to drink three such bottles in eight hours. Some, however, were not deterred by the heat and spent time in the park, where a slight breeze improved conditions slightly. Observatory senior scientific officer Olivia Lee told HKIBC that weather conditions will deteriorate tomorrow and on Monday as winds pick up. There will be heavy squally showers and thunderstorms. Winds will strengthen gradually and seas will be rough with, sh uh, with swells. We will be affected by the outer rain bands of the tropical storm. Beware of the uh, uh, deteriorating weather and also uh, stay away from the shoreline and not to engage in water sports uh, because of the expected uh, rough seas and swells. The good news is that the weather will improve from the middle of next week when the tropical storm is expected to head into Guangdong. At least 20 people have been killed as heavy rain lashed South Korea for the third straight day, triggering floods and landslides. Soldiers have been deployed for relief operations and to search for 10 people unaccounted for. Road links in some parts were damaged. Several injuries were reported as people in flood-hit areas were evacuated. Heavy rains also led to water overflowing from a dam in the middle of the country, submerging low-lying villages nearby. Severe floods caused by heavy rainfall have killed 88 people in India, with the capital New Delhi being the worst hit. Low-lying areas of Delhi remain flooded, although the river Yamuna's water levels have receded. Vehicles, homes and businesses are submerged, forcing thousands to evacuate and move to makeshift relief camps. Flooding forced the closure of a major bus terminus. Many braved waist-deep waters to go to work. Temperatures across Europe and North America are shattering records amid severe heat waves. Death Valley in California is expected to hit a new high of 55 degrees Celsius this weekend, Sachin Kedvi reports. Red alerts have been issued across 16 cities in Italy, which is sweltering under a severe heat wave. Temperatures have been hovering around 40 degrees Celsius. There's no relief for Spain either, where the mercury shot up to 37 degrees in the capital, Madrid. In Greece, the Acropolis in Athens was shut briefly because the 40-degree temperature made it too hot for tourists to line up to enter the ancient monument. We are doing our best with the water and the sunscreen um, to keep us going because we still want to explore the city even though it's very hot. High temperatures were recorded in many parts of Eastern Europe, with countries such as Romania sizzling in the 40s for most of the week. 
It's a lot worse across the Atlantic, where more than 100 million Americans have been advised to take extra precautions. The temperature in the southwest U.S. states of Nevada, Arizona, and California is expected to rise to 50 degrees. Some parts have been baking for more than two weeks with the mercury at 40 degrees or above. What's unusual is just how hot the temperatures are reaching in so many places simultaneously. And we have very clear evidence that global warming is the primary driver of that increase in, in the frequency of severe heat, the increase in the co-occurrence of severe heat. Many U.S. cities and districts are expected to break heat records this weekend. One of the hottest places on Earth, Death Valley in California, is expected to surpass its all-time high record of 54 degrees. Sachin Katwi, HKIBC. Locally again, the government is considering putting laser marks on packets or individual cigarettes so that buyers will know whether the products are smuggled. This comes as the health secretary escalated an anti-smoking campaign. Janice Lowe reports. The government has stepped up its offensive to win public support for its war against tobacco. Speaking on a radio program this morning, the health secretary noted there are claims that the crackdown would restrict the freedom to smoke. But Lo Chongmo argued that as smoking offers no benefits, why should people be given the right to do so? He said if parents do not wish their children to pick up the habit, they should not champion the freedom to smoke. Instead, they should warn children of the health risks and urge them never to light up. Lo emphasized that raising the tobacco duty and combating cigarette smuggling can be conducted at the same time. Lawmakers were concerned that smugglers would profit if the tobacco tax goes up. Some countries have placed laser marks on packets of cigarettes or even on individual cigarettes. The advantage of that is that we can easily identify which one is, has already been subjected to tax, which one are the illegal um, uh, uh, cigarettes. So uh, we are considering this option and in future this will help us to um, identify what are those illegally um, imported um, uh, cigarettes or tobacco products. That would certainly help for us to fight against all these illegally imported uh, uh, tobacco products. Low urged non-smokers to take part in the government's anti-smoking consultation before the exercise ends on September 30th. Janice Low. HKIBC. Chief Executive John Lee says the city will continue to search for talent in the face of a global recruitment race. He told a radio program that he expects Hong Kong's population to decline further in the second half of the year, but at a slower pace. Lee's remarks came as Canada relaxed its residency pathway to rule SER talent. The chief executive said his government will keep coming up with new measures to ensure that the city remains competitive and has sufficient talent and manpower. Lee added that the authorities are studying ways to boost the birth rate after the number of babies born last year dropped to a record low of 32,500. There has been an overwhelming response to a transitional housing open day. Housing officials say because of the interest, they may organize a similar event later this summer. Janice Lowe reports. People flocked to the Henry G. Leung Yang Mate Community Center this morning for the first transitional housing open day. Housing Secretary Winnie Ho said the event aimed to provide a better picture of the homes that would be completed by the beginning of next year to cater to those in need. This allows families to obtain relevant information earlier, Ho added. Booths were set up by 12 non-governmental organizations that operate transitional homes. They included groups run by ethnic minorities. This exhibitor said most of the large number of people inquiring about transitional homes were middle-aged. The Housing Bureau provided shuttle buses for visitors to head to some of the transitional housing sites. 
This woman, who went to A Square in Stanley, said she was impressed. With over 1,200 people attending the open day, the housing minister said the bureau may organize another one later this summer. Janice Low, HKIBC. A legislative council delegation is visiting Fujian province to promote cooperation between the two sides. On arriving in Fuzhou City this afternoon, delegates met Hong Kong, Macau and Taiwan office officials based in the city. LegCo President Andrew Leung said the 33 lawmakers will meet Hong Kong business people working in the region during their five-day trip. They will talk to Hong Kong exchange students as well as senior citizens who have retired in the province opposite Taiwan. The delegates will see what the SER government can do to help the elderly, such as providing them with medical vouchers. The lawmakers will also inspect Fujian's tech, tourism data and medical sectors, and visit industrial parks and free trade zones in Xiamen City. On to the weather now. It will be mainly cloudy with occasional squally showers and thunderstorms tomorrow. Temperatures will range between 27 and 33 degrees. More unsettled weather in the next couple of days as tropical cyclone Talon approaches. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That is our main news for Saturday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Chloe Fung. Thank you for watching. Good night.